Hey everyone, today we're checking out Gray Acres with Jake and Sharon Gray. The biggest complaint I see on my comment section is how does anyone get started with no money? Jake started with no money, no land, and he's gonna give us a tour of how he did it all. Stay tuned. Okay. I'm Jacob Gray. I'm Sharon Gray. We're here at Gray Acres. This is our little homestead. We've been here eight years or so. Um, I was an intern at the living farm across the street. This actually used to be the intern property. We started looking for property once I was exiting. Couldn't really find anything around the valley. As we exited, they kind of offered it to us and said, you guys interested? We said yes pretty quickly. <laughs> and so we've been here ever since. Two and a half acres at pretty much under market value. We knew we need a lot of work. Every year we just kind of keep adding to it, making it a little bit homier. Kind of the base of operations is where everything started. A lot of people come into farming already with the idealistic plan of what they want to do with the land and what they would like to cultivate, but sometimes it's not what the community is asking for. We saw that no one was really doing chicken, so we opted for jumping kind of wholeheartedly into the chicken thing. As I got into farming, I don't think I would have expected that I'd I'd be killing chickens for a living right. twice a week for half a season, but here we are. It's pretty good chicken. Amazing, I buy one a week, so. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> so we get chicks from a hatchery the day that they hatch. They'll ship them to us, and then we get them, and we raise them at that point. So this is the brooder. This is kind of the last piece that we scaled the operation to. We were still just kind of like hodgepodge and stuff for the brooder, so. Our main operation is pasture poultry, and what started as, you know, 100 birds in the backyard. It's grown to, we do about 5,000 birds annually. We've got a state licensed facility that we built uh, in 2019. So it was a kit from farm tech. You can fit about 1,500, 1,800 birds in here. Yeah, this is where they're raised up for the first three weeks or so. If you don't have grass in here, you gotta bring it to them, you know? So we're getting birds every two weeks. So we just have like these stages of birds throughout the brooder. These guys are about three weeks old, ready to go on pasture any day now. There's a lot of chicken in here. We've got a local elevator that mixes our feed. It's a corn soy wheat mix. One thing that sets their feed apart is they mix sunflower oil in here. Helps with like the oleic acid and gives some extra amino acids to the birds. We've been working with them for a few years and we just kind of keep tweaking depending on protein ratios, depending on how you know young the birds are. Or if we see they're lacking anything, we can talk with them. It's pretty symbiotic and, and our operation couldn't really last without them. Birds go through a lot of feed. They are pasture raised, but the majority of their feed still comes from grains. Yeah, we started seeing a lot less loss once we got this brooder house. Temperature controlled, keep the wind off of them, keep them protected from predators. Last batch of chicks came in last week. We estimate eight to 10 weeks, so we'll be done right around Halloween. The last couple batches always like the, we've got this like window in the middle of the season that's really great where like no issues, but it's those like shoulder months, early spring birds, fall birds where we're playing fate with, you know, mother nature. about the tractor. The chicken mobile. Yeah. So that's like, you know, we've gone through several versions. We started with like the Salatin inspired wooden ones. Um, they were a little too light for us. They were getting blown around in our like 50 mile an hour wind. Second version was like, all right, let's like throw some rebar in. And we used two thicker rebar. So version two is like so 200 heavy. pound mobile. Yeah. So subsequently, every time we have like a new version, it's like, okay, what didn't work and what did, and let's tweak it a little bit. That's the thing is like, we're never done changing. Like there's still stuff I want to add. And the nice thing about the chickens is like, they're so mobile. Everything I have is like mobile infrastructure. You know, we just have a few water totes. We've all got a bunch of like half inch poly line that's getting these guys water. And obviously we're on wheels, so. We can really go anywhere. I have a bunch of orchardists that always want to like get birds in, in between the trees and stuff, but like logistically it's a little hard like working around stakes and fence posts and stuff like that. We're able to scale this big because we just have these like big wide open pastures. I can't take credit for the design of these though. This was all Ben. 
This is my partner. So he was like the mad engineer that came up with these, like we've got ratcheting wheels on the back. I came up with the water system, hooking them all up to a series with nipples. As far as material costs go, I think it's cheaper to build one of these than it is to build a wooden one. It's the best design I've seen for <laughs> chicken tractors. Yeah, you know, like the traditionally you see like the thing that goes behind, you know, yeah. the little dolly. And it works reasonably well, but Ben who designed these was just like, why don't we just put wheels on each one? No dolly, like everything's in its own enclosed system. It's like a mobile home. We've got about 60 birds in these. They're 100 square feet each. Yeah, and then this is the solar charger. It's running probably like three or four kilovolts right now. It's really enough. You know, if Fox comes here and touches its nose to it, it's probably not gonna come back. We get up early, try to beat the heat, especially in the summer months. Birds like to move when it's nicer outside, so feeding them, getting fresh water, fresh grass. Come back here, milk, you know, water the garden, do some picking, weeding if we need to. So we have a crew of about five. Everyone has a job. It's pretty clean, pretty quick. We have like a really quick system that flows really well. Butchering, get gutting, cleaning, packing, freezing, everything is done within the day. And everything is by hand. I mean, of course, we have machines and things that are helping us, but all our quality control is mm -hmm. per, per person. That chicken has seen like five hands by the time mm -hmm. it's packed. Which is so. a testament. It's the reason why our birds are so good is, you know, we're taking the time to really look at them. And this year we actually rolled out Mountain Bird, which is our, our kind of retail brand and before we were all wholesale. We rebranded to Mountain Bird, housed on Gray Acres. And so we have the birds that are pasture raised on leased property, and then we butcher here on site. I was doing some quick numbers this morning. It's anywhere from like 12 to $18 a bird to raise it. That's from the cost of the chick, uh, cost of the feed. They eat about four pounds of feed to, to make one pound of meat. So there's five, six bucks in food. You got two bucks in the chick. And then with all of our help, you know, we pay people a, a pretty decent wage. We're hiring four people a day to butcher a fifth person out in the field while we're here. So that labor is probably another mm -hmm. six, seven bucks a bird. So it, it adds up. You can almost almost double the profitability of, of the bird once you're starting to cut it up. We've invested a lot. I mean, walk-in freezer is a brick and mortar facility, uh, just the mobiles and the brooder and all this stuff. Like it's gonna be several years before we, you know, see a return on that. got some dairy goats you can maybe see in the background um, milking them seasonally probably six months out of the year pretty small herd you know got some raw milk customers so we started out I think we got up to like six or seven dairy goats and just found it was it was more work than it was worth and we actually we had a big loss last year something came through and just wiped them out we're kind of in a rebuilding phase which is fine Chewy says it's fine this is Chewy uh, we got him right when we were starting raising birds. Uh, we were having a lot of predation issues and he was already trained, super friendly with people and he was working with birds. So we brought him on and it was a pretty seamless transition and he saved a lot of lives. Since then we kind of scaled up. We figured out electricity worked a little bit better than a dog. And so now he's just a farm dog. Hangs out with the goats. If you want to keep anything alive, don't get goats. Everybody says that, don't get goats. Jake, you know, in uh, Cedar Springs <laughs> Farm says the same thing. <laughs> they get out, they'll eat your trees. Dude. They'll tear them up. They're like your Holstein, biggest producer, kind of the most docile too. Whereas like, you know, that little brown one, she's alpine and she's got a little more wild in her. And goat dairy, you know, it's like better for the gut. If you have any kind of like lactose intolerant issues, usually you can process goat dairy because it has, it's got like a different protein makeup, got less uh, casein in it, which is like what typically people have an issue with. Goat milk is the only milk that can translate to other animal stomachs as well. When people have a bum cow or a bum sheep, you can use goat's milk because the protein is so basic that other animals' digestive tracts can, can handle it. I think it's a reason why humans can, can take it so easily. What are we doing here? We're making cheese. Making chef, you know, soft cheese. It produces quite a bit and it's like a 24 hour process. So I'm adding the culture in, kind of a bacteria that helps it start to coagulate. Will it make this much amount of cheese? No. 
three gallons, we'll get, probably get about four pounds of four cheese. Four pounds of cheese. Mm -hmm. We really try to like have as close to a zero waste policy as we can on the farm. That goes with like cheese, milk, goes with the chickens too. Like we're trying to use as many of the pieces as we can. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps our channel grow. If you have any questions, don't forget to put them down below and I will make sure Jake takes a look at them.